All eyes are on Melbourne, particularly the newcomers to the grid, Braun GP. These were the words that have been heard at the start of the 2009 Formula One season in Australia. The majority of us, whether those of us who have been following the sport for some time or even those of us who are new to F1, may be familiar with this story. It starts with the collapse of a struggling team and the uncertainty of two unlucky drivers. It starts with the two recognizable white and lime green automobiles lined up in pole and second positions for their very first race. Actually, it's one that starts with more than just those two vehicles. In this video, I'll be walking you through just a little bit of why Braun GP was a team whose history will never be forgotten, and why their experience is a singular one in Formula One history. So, without further ado, let's start. Prior to 2009, Honda's retirement. Contrary to popular opinion, Braun GP did not suddenly appear on the grid, fully developed and prepared to dominate the competition. The Honda Racing F1 team, which had left the sport in December 2008, just a few months before the start of the new season, had given birth to the team, as Jake Humphrey had said. The actual Braun GP team was established on March 6, 2009. Honda's performance in 2007 and 2008 wasn't terrific. Button and Barrichello placed 15th and 20th in the Drivers' Championship in 2007 and placed 8th in the Constructors' Championship that have been heard at the start of the 2009 Formula One season in Australia. 2008 was just slightly better. Honda's ninth-place finish in the World Constructors' Championship was even more discouraging. Honda started developing the 2009 vehicle in the middle of the current season, realizing their prospects for the 2008 car were gone. They seized the chance to salvage something from the terrible two years they'd recently experienced since new restrictions were about to be implemented. With a reported $398.1 million available through sponsorship, prize money, supplier partnerships, and other resources in 2008, Honda had one of the largest budgets in the sport at the time. Despite this, they were severely impacted by the world financial crisis in 2009, which affected all forms of racing. BMW and Toyota were two other manufacturers who suffered from the crisis, and both teams left Formula One at the end of 2009 after persevering for one more year. Formula One is not cheap, never has it been. The expenditures of competing in the sport rise yearly, and for Honda, the benefits just weren't outweighing the costs. Their accomplishments were pitifully few, the only podium they could claim for the entire year was the one that Barrichello got them in 2008. Additionally, the sport was not providing much in the way of engineering that they could use in their manufacturing of road cars, which discouraged investors. Ross Braun, the former team principal of Honda and former technical director of several teams, including Benetton and Ferrari, led the management buyout. He was credited with being a key player in both organizations, particularly Ferrari, which was on its way to reclaiming its former glory thanks to drivers like Michael Schumacher and his five consecutive world championships with the team. Honda offered to transfer more than $200 million in exchange for a symbolic $1 from Braun, rather than liquidating the team. From that point on, Honda was essentially paying Braun to compete against the team. However, things weren't always simple and straightforward after that. Braun had to take on the driver's contracts, as well as those of the 700 staff of Honda. Major salary reductions reportedly have to be made in order for Braun to keep hiring so many workers. Even Jensen Button reduced his salary by $7.5 million to remain with the club. Things can go wrong, but we are optimistic, and if we can capitalize on the performance of the car, and the car looks good, then I think the team have got a future," said Ross Braun. It would have been simple for Braun to switch teams. He might have left Honda to manage its debts in several contracts. He could have, 
but he chose not to since he thought the 2009 automobile had a high chance of succeeding and he didn't want the chance to pass up. Final costs for the new season for the brand new Braun GP were $120 million, less than a third of what Honda spent in 2008. New regulations lead to new disputes. 2009 witnessed several intriguing modifications to both the technical and sporting regulations. Among other things, we witnessed the introduction of the Kinetic Energy Recovery Systems KRs, the return of slick tires, and new aerodynamic constraints. The BGP-001 had its public debut on March 6 at Silverstone, but didn't really show the world what it was capable of until testing from March 9 to March 12 at Catalonia, when the car, driven alternately by Jensen Button and Rubens Barrichello, hit the timesheets in fourth, third, and pole twice. Even though it was still early in the preseason, Massa acknowledged at one time that the danger posed by Braun GP was real and apparent throughout more testing at Jerez the vehicle continued to demonstrate its competitiveness. We all understand, though, that technical advancements in Formula One are seldom without criticism. A formal protest filed during the first race of the season by Renault, Red Bull Racing, and Ferrari questioned the legality of the diffusers on the BGP-001, as well as the Williams F-31 and the Toyota TF-109. These diffusers, sometimes known as double diffusers, utilized the rear crash structure to produce more downforce, but used a double-decker design that offered the diffuser an additional exit location, essentially a hole in the back, and accelerated airflow, which increased the amount of downforce produced. The FIS subsequently said, well, we think it's fine, in response to the criticism, and released the vehicles before Melbourne. The Beginning of the Triumph The narrative of Braun GP may have begun with Honda's departure, but the true celebration didn't begin until Button qualified on pole in Australia. His teammate Barrichello, three-tenths of a second behind him. Just imagine that you are Jensen Button right now, also Rubens Barrichello. When you discover that you have no definite ride for the upcoming season, it shocks you since you live and breathe Formula One. Your future is uncertain. Then Braun GP became a reality. You may not be earning as much as you were, but that's okay. You can continue to drive. However, the car is quick. Faster than you anticipated, given the previous two seasons. And you begin to believe that perhaps, just perhaps, you have a shot to succeed. Button told the reporters in Melbourne, bright-eyed and animated. The last five or six months have been so tough for both of us. Going from not having a drive or any future in racing to putting it on pole here is just amazing. Many others caught on to the underdog theme, and his enthusiasm spread, so they wanted to see how far this squad could go on its own. With both cars crossing the start-slash-finish line in the identical positions that they had qualified in, Braun GP won the Australia race with a beautiful 1-2. For the first time since 1954, a constructor started in pole position and immediately won the race. In addition, there were several crashes, collisions and spins over the 58 laps of the race. The following race was placed in Malaysia, and it was surely a race to remember. It seemed as though the floodgates had opened above Sipang, drenching the circuit in rain, on top of the off-track drama involving Lewis Hamilton's disqualification from the previous race for lying to the stewards and McLaren's suspension for three races with a three-race suspension and firing of their sporting director. And yes, this is also the race where Kimi enjoyed his delicious ice cream. Again, Button took first place in qualifying, with Barrichello slipping to eighth after receiving a penalty for changing his gearbox from fourth. But Button thrived in the shifting circumstances, and he ended up winning steadily after the race was halted on lap 33 due to the never-ending rain. Another significant race was held in Spain, and several vehicles received improvements, the BGP-001 included. 
Button once again took the lead in qualifying, followed closely by Vettel. Third-placed Barrichello was being pursued by both Weber and Massa in the Ferrari. The actual race, though, was a different story. Barrichello got off to a great start and quickly pulled clear of his teammate to take the lead. However, because Barrichello and Button were using different pit tactics, Button finally closed the distance, and Barrichello was unable to maintain his advantage. Braun GP's advantage and final 1-2 result, which meant that the team was now leading the World Constructors' Championship by 30 points, were only solidified by a number of unfortunate events affecting Ferrari and McLaren. Braun GP once again finished first and second in Monaco, giving them their third victory of the year. When Vettel's super soft tires started to fail, he was unable to close the deficit. This gave the Braun cars and Raikkonen a significant advantage because everyone else behind Vettel lost time. With his five victories and a lone third-place finish, Button had 51 points in the World Drivers' Championship at this stage, which was twice as many as Vettel in third, with 23 points, and Braun GP also had twice as many points as Red Bull in the World Constructors' Championship. Fun Fact the engine in Button's car was the first ever to win three back-to-back -back races, a first in F1 history. Vettel had the advantage in Turkey, earning his second pole position of the year. It appeared like Vettel would control the race since in the last few races held here, the pole sitter had always finished first. But mistakes happen, and Vettel made one by driving wide on turn 9 giving the lead to Button, who had been running in second position. Due to a clutch issue, Barrichello made a terrible start to his race, falling all the way from 3rd to 13th. Records are cherished in Formula 1, both setting and breaking records. Button was no exception, becoming the first driver in history to win six of the first seven races, and the first English driver to win four straight races since Mansell in 1992. One can only speculate as to Button's emotions, and conversely, his teammate yet again overshadowed. Challenges and catching up Let's be clear about one thing right now. Braun GP wasn't actually the underdog squad. They invested months in developing that automobile, had resources to support it, and many smart and diligent individuals working for it, as I've already indicated. Additionally, they had a solid team of trustworthy drivers to get everything moving. They met the bar for a passable level of competition. Due to the fact that they were a brand new team, in name, that had a ton of success in their first season, and that the Ferrari McLaren storyline was becoming old, the unexpectedness of events and the entire underdog theme arose. Everybody enjoys a good tale. They received one on a silver platter in 2009, too. Despite all of Braun GP's early season success and luck, the British GP appeared to be the turning point. Vettel and Weber controlled most of the weekend's practice sessions, eventually qualifying first and third, with Barrichello squeezing between the Red Bull sandwich in second. Button's sixth-place qualifying finish was his poorest of the year, Vettel made amends for his misfortune in Turkey with a victory that he completely dominated from start to finish. Red Bull finished with a 1-2 as Barrichello finished third after Weber gave him the slip. Button did neither better nor worse, ending up where he had begun. Red Bull's assurance of winning the title started to increase at that point. Vettel was clearly a very strong competitor and Weber wasn't exactly a slouch either. In contrast, Hamilton wasn't quite experiencing the season he anticipated after winning the championship in 2008. The Ferrari team was not performing well either. However, it appeared as though Braun GP was finally starting to falter a little, and Red Bull wasn't going to let this opportunity slip away from them. The Red Bulls and the Bronze engaged in combat in Germany. In that order, Weber took the pole for the first time ever, followed by Barrichello, Vettel, and Button. After they collided once during the race, Barrichello was able to pass Weber for the lead. 
a puncture caused by a collision with Weber basically put an end to Hamilton's race when he attempted a move for the lead as well. Weber and Barrichello were in a constant battle for the lead, but Weber held his ground and used his pole position to his advantage, winning the race and becoming the first Australian driver to do so in 30 years. The bronze lagged behind in fifth and sixth, with Vettel finishing second behind him. Although both Red Bull drivers had surpassed Barrichello in the standings, Button still held the World Drivers' Championship lead. With Braun GP scoring 112 points and Red Bull scoring 92.5 points, the race for the World Constructors' Championship was also beginning to look competitive. Even though Hamilton won the pole in Italy, Braun GP appeared to be back on track. They were using a one-stop strategy because of their greater fuel loads, whilst the majority of the front runners were using two stoppers. The bronze eventually cruised to their last one two of the season and their final victory by taking advantage of that, one more for Barrichello to notch onto his post. At this moment, the squad essentially controlled the World Constructors Championship, although the title contest was still ongoing. Vettel and Weber still had a chance to win if the cards fell their way, even if it appeared that Button and Barrichello would now face off against one another. Vettel was adamant that the championship wasn't over, and he wasn't too eager to give up either. Vettel kept his title aspirations alive in Japan with a victory over Hamilton and Trulli, while Button also managed to hang on to a point position finishing only one spot behind Barrichello in seventh place. And certainly, Vettel was still in the running at this point, but in actuality, Button needed to have a flawless performance to win the championship at the following race, and Barrichello could challenge that with his 14-point disadvantage. The end of the season For Braun GP, the year wasn't straightforward or trouble-free, they had the Red Bulls, who were serious competitors, and Hamilton, who had fought well up until a certain point. Braun GP stagnated in development while other teams caught up with improvements, and as the season went on, their half-year advantage was lost. The season included more mishaps, crashes, and spins than a lifetime movie could handle. But it appeared as though this was it. The race that would decide everything would be the penultimate one. Interlagos, Brazil. The course was pummeled by heavy rains during qualifying. The qualifying session was the longest in F1 history since it took so long for the fog to clear, but Barrichello must have felt as though the sun was pouring down on him when he won pole to the pleasure of the Brazilian home fans. It was concerning that Button qualified in 14th place. Barrichello would only be four points ahead of him in the World Drivers' Championship if he managed to win this race without earning any points for himself. He had to do his absolute best in order to accept everything today. Throughout the first half of the race, Barrichello maintained control despite a number of incidents. Kavalainen's small accident that caught out two cars, Trulli and Sutil colliding and eliminating Alonso, Kavalainen taking his fuel hose with him, and Raikkonen's car attempting to turn the hose into a flamethrower, and Kavalainen taking his fuel hose along with him. He was finally passed by Weber, though. Button took advantage of the events to advance up the field, even as more cars were having mechanical problems and breakdowns. Unfortunately, one of those vehicles was Barrichello's. After colliding with Hamilton, his tire was damaged, and he dropped to eighth after making a pit stop. Although Weber got the victory, all eyes were on Button, who finished in fifth, and that was sufficient. That was simply right, and Button, who had the biggest grin and the greatest amount of optimism, was aware of it. In only one year, history was made in F1. What were a struggling team and two drivers with uncertain futures, it was now, at the end of the season, a team of champions, with Jensen Button becoming the 2009 Formula One World Drivers' Champion and Braun GP, the 2009 Formula One World Constructors' Champion. 
We hope you enjoyed this story of the Braun GP team and the 2009 season. And if you want to know what happened in the following seasons from 2010 to 2014 and learn about an amazing rivalry between Sebastian Vettel and Fernando Alonso, feel free to check out our first video about that. See you in the next one.